Welcome back to Players Only. I was trying to think of a way to talk about the last game or something. That was just a beat down. Hey, yeah, every game can't be good. And Philly just gave him the business. And, and you know, Isaiah talked a little bit about it. it's the kind of game a coach goes in the locker room and throws it away. But it's also the kind of game, even though the coach throws it away, the leader goes to guys like, hey, we can't. I know this. We're not going to panic, but we can't let this happen anymore with big games. Because, K okay, Mac, my thing with young teams is when do you have the chance during the season to play games that have a playoff atmosphere yeah. or you're really ticked off at someone? And those tell you a little bit more about yourself than others, even though, you know, the ship don't be sinking yet. <laughs> but, uh, you know, and, and when you look at the body language of and, and the style of play tonight of the Sixers, I'm not going to speak for you, but knowing you like I do, I, I think you were pretty happy with them playing inside and out and sticking to their game plan tonight. Yeah, they had 40 assists, which I like because that means the ball's moving, the Sixers. Then they jammed it inside and started inside and worked their way out. And the three-point line opened up because of all the penetration they had in the paint. And that's the way the game, I think, should be played. And not, not every team has an Embiid, of course. But when you got a horse like that, give him the ball. Yeah. I, I mean, he had he had 31 points on 17 shots. Yeah. Really efficient. But it was, the, on, on the bad flip side of what I saw tonight, the T-Wolves kind of gave in. I yeah. mean, the middle of the second quarter, they went like, Man, we, we don't have it. And you were talking about something like big games. There's signature games that yeah. you have. And if you're, even if your team goes out and just fights like crazy, if you're, if you're Ryan Saunders, the coach, and you lose a tight game, you feel good, man. You feel bad right now. If you're, if you're looking at it and say, wait a minute, this is a, a, a guy kind of basically cursed us all out, Jimmy yeah. Butler. Left, Come on. Said, said you need me. Yeah, left and said, you I don't want me play. on that yeah, wall. Exactly. You need me on that wall. <laughs> and this is the effort that yeah. you give, man. That, 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 that kind of surprised me. So they got a long way to go. Ryan's got a lot of work to do with that team. But on the flip side, getting back to the Sixers, man, if they play like this, they're a problem because there's yeah. not a lot of teams can handle that big horse on the inside. And once you establish that inside game, Simmons was driving and dunking. Well, he ended up, like, I think one rebound away from a triple-double yeah, or one yeah. assist away from a triple-double. And you establish that. It, it's Man, it, that's that's big. You put foul trouble on them. You've got them collapsed. you got everybody inside. Then the shooters make shots. So I, I like the way Philly played. Me too. And it's more consistent that way. Like you said, it doesn't start with, hey, let's see who makes yeah, you see that right down. We we call that an official beatdown. <laughs> Giving the team the business, you can go into many ways. That 83 points was a season high in the first half. The 149 points was a season high. They just got numbers, blew them out by 20 on the boards. I mean, just some impressive numbers. K-Mac, you just said 40 assists and tonight. We have Mr. Triple Double himself. That's right. B. Simmons with us. Thank you so much for joining us. I mean, tonight, 7 to 10, 8 for 7 to 10, 8 defensive rebounds. Uh, you missed the triple double uh, by one assist. They should trade you. Your, your career is done. Why'd you miss that? But hey, you're such a joy to watch. And for our fans, especially young players at home, what is the most enjoyable part? of playing in the NBA? I think for me, um, getting an opportunity to get better every day. You know, there's so many games, you know, back-to-backs, and you're just on the road so much. It's like you, you have one bad game, and then, you know, the next night you have another game to, you know, kind of redeem yourself and uh, try and get better. So I think just being able to play every day and, and do what I love every day, um, that's the best part for me. You know, Ben, you guys started off and you dominated the paint. You had Joel Embiid going. You were driving in there. You guys just collapsed their entire defense and played inside out. And all those threes opened up. You guys put, shot the three ball very well tonight. But, you know, when you guys play like that, I just think you're so hard to beat. Every once in a while, and I watch you guys a lot. I know Brett Brown, Chris Babcock's a good friend of mine, your coaches. Yep, and so yep. I get frustrated when you guys don't play that way. You know, you know, you, when you guys just play inside out yep. like that, totally attacking the, the paint at first. Do you, how do you feel about that when you play like that? And you, know, you get the sense that you got to play like that more? Definitely. I understand what you're saying uh, completely. I think, you know, we kind of get a rhythm. We have guys who are used to running down the floor, and sometimes we slow it down. Um, but at times we kind of need to slow it down and, and make sure we're taking care of the ball and trying to get, it, get into a rhythm. Um, but, you know, I love the way we play. You know, guys can run the floor, uh, get open shots, transition, transition buckets, um, and I think we're getting a lot better at that.
Yeah, no, I do too. And I, like I say I love when you guys play like this. The other question is, you know, you're the point guard. You get the ball in your hands a lot. You get a lot of assists. Has Joel Embiid just taken up more paint lately? It looks like when I watch him play, mm -hmm. he's been going in and getting two feet in the paint and demanding the ball right. down low a lot more. I tell him every time he runs down, he posts up and I'm gonna throw it to him. Um, I think sometimes he needs a reminder of you know how how strong he is down there uh, and how efficient he is. Sometimes he likes to shoot the three ball. Um, but he's so efficient down there. We'd love to see him post up every time, you know, do what he does best. You know, I'm going to say some names here, and I know people are either going to go in uproar or kill me, but your game, <laughs> when, I, when I think about your game, I, I think Magic, I think Bron uh, attacking the basket, I think Lynn Bias, um, I, I think Pippen. And, and what I mean by that is your size, your mm -hmm. body type, the, the way you play. If you had to critique yourself and say next year and the year after I'm coming back better in these areas, being a point guard, you know, yeah. what, what would you say that your next jump is going to be or something that you're working on uh, just to continue uh, the way that you're going on this upward trend of playing? What, what do you work on to improve over the summer? I think just knocking down shots and being a consistent shooter in terms of um, just, just shooting the ball uh, when I am open and taking more shots. And I think just getting comfortable in certain areas on the floor. You know, tonight was one of those games where uh, Jimmy is playing against his old team and all kinds of stuff happened when he left there. Yeah. Was, there any, was there any talk in the locker room about, man, let's go get this one? Or did you guys uh, as a group say anything to each other? Um, you know, we, we know we needed this game. Um, and I think everybody was kind of locked in mentally. I saw Jimmy before the game. He was definitely locked in. Um, but I think, you know, we always have the same mindset. No matter who we play, uh, we've got to come out and get wins. Uh, we're going to let you go, B. Simmons, but we usually see you warming right. up with your headphones on, man. Uh, who, who are you listening to today? Uh, it depends who's out. I like Gunner. Okay. He's nice. Oh, little baby. Yep. All right. That's what's up, man. Hey, thank you All so right. much for joining this Great game tonight. And uh, we're a big fan of yours. Always enjoy watching you play. That's the man, Ben Simmons. Came tell Joel, so, more, paint, more paint, more paint, more <laughs> paint. Tell Mikhail I got you. I'm going to tell him right now. Hold on. I'm <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's the man, Ben Simmons. And uh, he's going back to the official card of the NBA. Welcome back to Players Only. 83 points for Philadelphia. Mm. They are getting money out there. Just toying, playing around with the Minnesota Timberwolves. Chris Weber, Kevin McHale here. Kevin, you know, we were excited about this game coming in because yeah. we knew all the history between both teams. The fact that Butler basically, let's just be honest, went in and punked the Minnesota team. The fact that Wiggins has been playing better since He's gone. I mean, sorry, the fact that Cat Towns has been playing since, better since he's yep. gone. The fact that we want to see Wiggins step up and be that number two alpha on that team. And for me personally, uh, to fans out there, I would always try to think of something to be pissed about before I played the game. No and before this game, no more needed than to say, I'm playing for my boy Towns, Kevin Mack, whoever, we got your back today, or I'm about to show you what we're going to do. And so when you have games like this, I don't necessarily think it's to the leadership, but it speaks a little bit to the attitude of the team in the locker room coming out, getting beat like this with the body language being kind of a defeatist attitude. It looks yeah, like. you know, Philly's run, run on them, got in the paint. They've got everything they wanted. You know, they're, they're, they're attacking the glass. They're getting out, getting out in transition, getting easy baskets, getting threes. They're just toying with them right now. And, you know, I, I, we talked about it uh, at the top of the show. I really thought that the, the Towns Embiid matchup would decide who wins this game. Right now, it's all Embiid. I mean, Towns, you know, played okay, but I mean, he just, this guy right here, I like the way he doesn't settle. You know what I mean? He gets in there, look at that nice little patient footwork jump. Hook. That's a monster shot, yeah. you know? And again, he's not going to settle because Chris, we've seen him shoot this shot a lot of times and we've all both said, put the ball on the floor. He gets it on the floor, goes in there, gets a little offensive, uh, offensive tip on his own shot. And again, you know, they're, they're good defense by Philly. They're pushing it up. The big guy's showing his versatility. But this is what I like. Reddick comes off. He draws two really quick. Could have taken that shot. What does he see? He sees the big guy and gives him that little throw down for a dunk. And, you know, that's what, you know, because Reddick is a deadly shooter. Yeah. And you know when a shooter rises up and makes that pass to you, that just gives you that good vibe like, man, we're in this thing together. Yeah. And Philly's feeling it right now. If they play like this, Chris, inside out, playing through that big guy, I, I like this team when they play like this. I like this team, too. So let me ask you this, then. Why is Butler complaining? They have the fourth best yeah. record in the East. Why would he be complaining? This is just that I bring my personality where I am, because we all know he's a hell of a player. Mm -hmm. I don't think 
he's as good as the respect he's getting to be able to talk this much in the locker room. Yeah. That's my opinion. You're yeah. not that good to come over here and talk before Katz and Wiggins or before Embiid and, by the way, Simmons. I don't understand that. But is it is it going to travel? Like, like, you know how kind of right now with your Celtics, and I mean that because you played there, with your Celtics, how – we kind of see little hints. We yeah. need to start at the top to the bottom. You hear that and you start going, wait a minute, you guys like Washington? Everybody eats, meaning that we need it to pass the ball around. When I see good teams trying to win a championship and that one rogue player, uh, when I played, we would have taken them into the locker room. But you also wonder, wait a minute, is your biggest goal to win a championship or to look good and come here and yeah. be, be the man? I mean, did you have that feeling when you played? How did you guys stop that in the locker room or, or with your well, coach? Well, I, hey, Jimmy Butler should just call up. Um, some of those old Lakers that played with Magic and Kareem. Mm. You know, James Worthy. Okay. Perfect example. Hall James Worthy, Hall of Fame. <laughs> right. Hall of Fame James Worthy. That's okay. right, right. You don't think James Worthy had, I know James Worthy had a half where he had four points, but Kareem had 17, Magic had 15, right. and they were up 12, and they were 15. He was in the locker room saying, hey, great job, fellas. You know, yeah. way to go. He was going to get his eventually, but there's some nights that the guys play really well, and that's what Jimmy's got to embrace. Jimmy's got to walk in right now and say, man, let's feed and bead. Feed the beast. He's yeah. killing it. And Simmons has got it rolling, driving, playing, making passes, and take a back seat. Um, in, 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 on the Celtic teams I played on, there were a lot of nights where the best player on that floor wasn't, you know, they, they always say, you know, myself, you know, Mikhail, Bird, Parrish. Yeah. Hell, it was Dennis Johnson. Some nights it was Danny Ainge. And we enjoyed that, man. Right, like, right. those guys would be getting off, and we'd yeah. be like, yeah. we're killing them, yeah. you know? Yeah. And you can go out and have a very pedestrian 14, 15 points. But you won by 20. Yeah. And yeah. he's got to embrace everybody else's success. I don't believe you can truly win a championship, Chris, if you can't embrace other people's success. Like if we're playing together, I got to really enjoy you yeah, yeah, getting off. Yeah. I got to enjoy you whipping some guy. Exactly. I got to be heading the cheerleading thing exactly. saying, you can't guard Weber. That's Who are you right. putting that's on right. Chris Weber? Yeah. And, and, you know, and, and, and enjoy that, man. Yeah. And that's what builds it up. And right now, Jimmy doesn't have that. Jimmy's got a little bit of me and not enough we. Yeah, and we know he can be that we guy. We've seen him do it in other places. Yes. We want to know, is he going to bring that there? That reminds me when you talk about those good teams like your Celtics. How about the other night? Kevin Durant, he's hot. He's scoring and he gives it back to, to Curry. Curry throws it back to him. He's like, no, no, no. This <laughs> yeah. is your game. Curry hits the big three. But that's what you talk about. Enjoy seeing your teammates winning. And that play between Redick and Embiid, I think yeah. that's indicative of that type of play. Let's play with them this play. Get a dunk and I'll shoot it the next time. But that's just our opinion on players only. And let's see what Albert E. Russell has to say. Uh, the network barber deserves a medal. Uh, he keeps you crispy. You're right. That's my man, Marcus Graham. Marcus Harvey. I'm sorry. My brother's Marcus Graham. That's another thing. Marcus Harvey. My bad, Marcus. He's the man. Appreciate you, Albert. This is Players Only, though. We'll be right back. Hey, we're joined by our man 3D out there. Wherever he goes, it is shooter's paradise, even though I'm sure it's freezing out there in Philadelphia. 3D, I'm going to ask you a personal question to start off. Now, Minnesota has won four of their last five games, and they've hit 10 or more threes in those wins. Your son, he's a nice shooter. How old is he? 13. What's his name? Call him Trey Scott, a.k.a. Trey D. Okay, so if you have to tell Trey D, my nephew, any kids tonight to watch shooters on either team to emulate them, what two shooters would you pull up? Well, first of all, I have to start with the 76ers. We call him JJ, a.k.a. Yay Yay Reddick. Make sure your nephews watch him. Elbows always in, follow throughs always there, and the body is always squared up. And in case your nephew grows to be 6'10 or 6'11, make sure he looks at Dario Sarvich because he steps back, stretch four, and he always leaves it. <laughs> That's right, he always leaves it. 3D, what is the mood like there in the 76ers locker room? Well, the move is pretty good, see web believe it or not. I know so much talk is about Jimmy playing against Minnesota in the trade, but see web and Fish and Mikhail, you know this. He was only with Minnesota for maybe barely a year, so not as much turmoil for the game. For the Sixers, they're trying to figure out how can all three of those guys play together with Ben Simmons along with Embiid so they can get ready for the playoffs. Yeah, Dennis, you know, the guy I've, I've been impressed with was Philly over the last three, four weeks has been in beat. It seems like he's in the paint more. He's just doing some bully ball. That guy's a big, strong young man. And I like him. What's, what's the feeling there in Philly about this team kind of kind of uh, putting him at the top, him being the main horse and playing around in beat? Well, K-Mac, you hit it right on the head. Well, Embiid wants to be in the post. He wants to post up more. 
we know he has tremendous ability to shoot the three. But I think early in the season, he was trying to tell us, yes, I can shoot the three, but I want to go down low and dominate and find the three when it finds me. So if he gets a big rebound and he's a trail, trail five, look for him to look for his three-point shot then. You know, 3D was sitting there talking to D Fish, who's been in many locker rooms, won championships, and of course, you know, King Mac, they won championships, and we were talking just a little bit about the personality of a guy like Joel Embiid. A little bit to Kevin McHale's last question, do people know in, that Embiid is the man there, and that is Butler making ripples there? What is the feel from the fans about Butler and kind of what he said lately, and then about him going up against his former team again? Well, Philly fans, believe it or not, guys, they love Jimmy Butler. They love his demeanor. But let's keep it 100. As you said earlier, Derek Fish, because I was listening to the last uh, segment, this city runs through Embiid. Bottom line, they want Embiid to be happy. They want him playing great basketball. And they want Ben Simmons and Jimmy Butler feeding off of that. But at the end of the day, we all know this. This is a city of toughness. They love Jimmy's toughness. Thank you so much, 3D. I'll make sure that my nephew, he keeps watching your son on Instagram, leaving it, keeping that elbow in. Appreciate you. That's 3D all the way from Shooter's Paradise, which is just uh, residing in Philly for the next few hours. Appreciate you, 3D. Thank you, guys. Yeah, that's right. This is that man, Jimmy Butler. Check it out. He's the four-time All-Star, 2015 most in pool player, four-time All-Defensive second team. He's averaging 19 points. 38% off threes, 84% from the free throw line. That boy good.